Hello everyone. Welcome back to Steel Forest Welding and Forge. Today, my friends, is the final part of the series of setting up my new Precision Matthews 1030V lathe. Today, we are going to be building a test bar to center our tailstock as well as taking any twist out of our bed. Now, before we get into it today, folks, please thumbs up, please subscribe, and if you'd like, please leave me a comment down below. And with further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. First, we'll need to build a lathe dog, which is a tool that is used when turning between two centers. First, we'll be taking a small piece of pipe and facing off the front of it, as well as putting a small chamfer on it. Next is to drill a hole on the top dead center of this tubing. Stainless steel is a really hard material, so it's best to always take drilling in small increments, so that way you don't ruin your drill bits. Using a center finder, I can mark the opposite side of the hole from where I will have to weld that arm you see laying on my table. All right, so here's a little advice to welding fabrication. Whenever you're welding a nut onto some material, if you're using the bolt to kind of hold it center, take that bolt out when you do your final welding because that nut will expand and then contract. And if that happens, you probably won't get this bolt out without ruining the threads. After we're done welding this, what we'll do is we'll go back through and we'll probably tap this hole. Next, I'm gonna weld this nut onto this piece of tubing. You want this to be a pretty good weld. This nut is gonna be holding quite a bit of tension that's gonna be responsible for holding your part on your lathe. You don't want this breaking. This is the beauty of using a lathe coupled with fabrication. Because we face the front of this tubing off, we can lay the tubing flat on the table and using one, two, three blocks and clamping the arm of the lathe dog to those blocks, these two parts are now square to each other. All right, here we go. Sorry if the lighting is a little bit funky. I'm trying something new today. So this is what we're gonna be cutting on for our test bar. So I have it marked out here at six inches and then half an inch. These two spots here are where we're going to be testing our measurements. Now this is a piece of 1048 steel. This is classified as a medium carbon steel. I've never worked with this before. I'm not sure how well it's gonna cut, but we're about to find out here. Let's go ahead and chuck this up and get going. First, we'll face off the front of our part. And next, we'll center drill using a number two center drill. So now we're gonna bring in our tailstock for tailstock support. And now we're just going to run a series of passes to true up the face of this part to our lathe. Using our grooving tool, we're going to cut out those marks for our collars. Next, we're going to turn down the area in between those two collars to the same depth as the grooves that we cut earlier. Now, we don't want to go too crazy when cutting these grooves and turning down this part. We want it to remain as rigid as possible. Now, during this process, I became familiar with chatter. Now, chatter is that vibrating sound you hear in the background, and what it means is that the tool is skipping around instead of making a nice clean cut. I ended up turning up my RPM significantly, and that helped to reduce the chatter quite a bit. All right, so here we are. We can look kind of that final finish now. You know, it's not perfect, but uh, for the beginner machinists, you know, it's not too bad. So the next step is to take away our tail support and to narrow down these two spots here, taking off two thousandths of an inch at a time, and that is it nothing else because we're going to have a loss of rigidity we want to take off as little as possible and then by taking the measurements and the difference between these two spots we're going to be able to find out how we need to adjust if we need to the bed of our level after applying some layout fluid and setting our depth at two thousandths of an inch using the auto feed we start turning down these collars until all the markings from that layout fluid are gone that's better Next, using a 1 tenth micrometer, which is 0 0.0001, we're going to find the outside diameter of both of these collars. So after checking my measurements and getting them to repeat three times with my micrometer, I have 0 .987, 0 0.9887 inches on this side and 0.9 nine three four inches on this side which means this side is too close to my tool post so my bed is twisted this way i mean i should say this way this way is higher than this way so what i need to do is put a shim on the far side on the bottom of the lathe we're gonna go ahead and do that right now 
First, we'll loosen this bolt, which holds down the far end of our lathe, and then using a pry bar with a wooden block to prevent damaging and bending our chip tray, we'll start adding shims to the side of the lathe that we need to move up, and then tightly bolt it back down, and then rerun our test. So, after many struggles and many trials, I eventually got to a point where I used a 1mm shim, a point two two nine and a 0 0.038 millimeter shim to give me a shim height of 1.67 millimeters and that seems to have been the lucky number because right now both of these spots have the exact same measurement down to a thousandth of an inch yeah what i meant to say was one tenth as in point zero 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 one still kind of getting used to machining nomenclature it can be a bit confusing at times so now that we have taken all the twist out of the bed, the next part is to align our tail stock. And we're going to do this by turning between centers. So we have to face our part and center drill a hole with a number two center drill. When prepping this part for turning between centers, be sure to leave enough room for number one, your lathe dog, and number two, so you don't crash into your lathe dog with your carriage when you're turning down your part. Well, here's our setup. We have the face plate on our dead center, <clears throat> the lay dog that we built, and a dead center on this end. And on this end, we put a high pressure grease because this is a dead center. Dead centers will give you a much more accurate reading than a live center. And because this does not spin, we need lubrication in here to keep uh, this from being damaged. So it's a high pressure grease and high temperature grease. <clears throat> now this is a home built design and I have never done this before. So we're gonna start off with the lathe kind of slow here. Just make sure everything works. Everything is tightened down and ready to go. So what I'm worried about is that lay dog being putting everything a little off center with the weight. Yeah, you can see how that thing kind of, the whole unit kind of shakes. Hmm. So we are going to have to figure out some kind of way to offset that weight by putting something over here. Eventually I was able to rebalance my lathe just by using a bolt, some washers, and a nut. Now we're going to repeat the same process as before. We put some layout fluid on and then using the auto feed, we turn down those collars until all that layout fluid is gone. And then using our micrometer, we measure the outside diameter of both of our collars. So after running a pass and getting all of the dye off of both sides, I ended up with 0.594 on this side and 0.9472 on this side. So we have a difference of 18 thousandths of an inch, which means since this side was cutting closer, we need to move the tailstock in that direction uh, 9 thousandths of an inch. Ugh, sorry, again, nomenclature. That's actually 9 tenths of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and get a test indicator set up and do that. All right, so we have a dial indicator set up here. Now, if you were to look right here, you will see on this indicator, there is a marking that each one of these tick marks represents 0. 0.0005 inches. So what I did here is I set this up just below this second tick here because that second tick should be about 1 thousandth of an inch. Again, nomenclature, I'm so sorry. So. Theoretically, by moving this to zero, I should be getting this tailstock in just about where it needs to be. So what we have to do is there are bolts just like this on both sides, one here and one here. What we have to do is loosen this side while tightening this side and watching our dial indicator. And we should get this dial indicator to zero, and hopefully that'll be what we need to do to get this guy zeroed out. Tighten this guy. It looks like our indicator moved the wrong way. I'm fairly certain, though, that I'm moving this the correct way. Let's experiment here. I loosen that, tighten on this side. Hmm. 
that moves the indicator that way. Well, I'm going to trust the indicator and not what I believe should be happening. If those aren't famous last words, I don't know what are. Well, turns out I moved it in the wrong direction and my initial guess was correct. I was just reading the indicator incorrectly. So after running it and realizing my mistake, I went back, got my indicator back out and readjusted my part to move my tailstock into the correct direction. And here are my final measurements, 0.9211 on the left side and 0.9218 on the right side. Not perfect, but pretty gosh darn good. Well, there you go, folks. A difference of 0 0.0007 inches from one side of this test bar to the other. Now, in the professional machining world, that might not be quite up to par, but for here at home and the tools and parts that I'm going to be making, mostly hobby related, that's going to be just fine. I'm really glad that I went through and I did this process. I got much more comfortable with my nomenclature, with my tooling measurements, and with diagnosing different problems. For example, learning how to see and uh, get rid of chatter, making sure that my tool height is set correctly, and how to turn between centers. Now, if I had to change one thing, I would go back and we're going to be getting rid of this homemade lathe dog. It just doesn't quite work in uh, this setup. This thing chatters in here like crazy. I actually have a piece of paper towel in here to keep this thing from chattering while it moves around. Now for the home machinist who's an amateur like me getting a new lathe and may consider skipping this step, I highly recommend that you don't. Go ahead and do it. The uh, amount of skills that you will learn and how much more comfortable you will become with your lathe makes it very much worth it. So that does it for today's video, folks. Please hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe. Please leave me a comment down below of any future machining videos you would like, reviews, or welding videos that you would like to see. Until then, folks, work hard and stay humble.